apt is this? How apt is this session about overcoming the fear of being alone? Right? And as I... Oh. As I tried to pray and ask God, Lord, what is the message here? Why this topic? Why this time? And why for these women that you will ought to gather on that day? Because this was given to me weeks ago. And as I dealt with it, I'm led to one thing, which I endeavor to share with you by the grace of God. Isn't it, whether we like it or not, we just want to disconnect at some point, right? Yes? And the topic of disconnection is so broad that you cannot not talk about every aspect of it. Follow? Because there is a good sense of disconnection because you need to disconnect and be alone with God or to think things through, right? But there is also a disconnection that is actually like, actually harmful and considered to be in modern psychology disease, but simply put, in the Bible, sin. So, and I was like, what is this, Lord? And the more I understand, it is indeed insanity. The endeavor, my endeavor here is for us to understand why, why is it? Why is it that being so lonely or the propensity or the pull to be lonely is so strong, no matter what, how I know I'm loved or how much sometimes I feel insecure that I have people who love me. Clear? Yes? Alam niyo man ako, di ba? Gusto natin nag-uusap lang tayo. So, <laughs> it's like, how is this? It's crazy, isn't it? And the more you feel like whatever is the reason we'll go through that, whatever is the reason why you are disconnected or you are afraid of being alone or you are actually separating yourself from the very people we love and sometimes we can't kick it off. And we end up more lonely, isn't it? And even if you look at your table mates, look around them. So I'm glad you did not cower from the earthquake and you came here. Isn't it sometimes we find ourselves lonely? Yes. We find ourselves lonely and just for some reason, we cannot bring ourselves back in the presence of the people we love much more with God. So that's my, I, wanna, I want us to understand that, but actually doesn't leave us with that, but really focus on then how do we overcome it? You cannot overcome something if you don't know and understand what you're dealing with. Follow? Yeah. I think at this point, and I've been visiting your, your women to women for three years now, alam you know how my mind works, right? Yeah. Everything has to be, have a definition. Clear? So are we ready? But allow me just to pray very quickly. Abba Father, indeed, with your great love, chains are broken that would lead to worship and praise your name. Lord, as we come together as women, as daughters, as mothers, as, as sisters, Father, we bring to you our mind, body, soul, and spirit. May you, may you illuminate with your light all the Cresses and even the darkest recesses of our heart that we could bring it to you that we would truly walk out this room refreshed forgiven and in the presence of your love guide every word and every thought lord god and i pray that only the power of the holy spirit will take residence in me and control this entire conversation and presentation of your good news and everybody that you are still calling and calling back to your kingdom may really have that open mind and open heart because Cause you will cause them to open their eyes and heart and enable them to respond. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Insanity of human disconnection. So I think I kind of get you the picture. Like, I'm not telling her, are we all insane, Earl? But it's up to you. Do you think you're insane sometimes? <laughs> sometimes? All the time? But sa wag lang chronic, huh? But isn't it that we are all actually depraved mind? Remember, I thought that if we are not in Christ, consider 
because I know there's a lot of people here. We don't really know. There's a lot of been coming here. There's also people that are just newly invited here. Consider that we actually have a depraved mind apart from Christ. And what does that mean? Sometimes our mind can not be sound or insane. So let's begin. What is this connection? What is this connection? This sense of separation, right? Separating. You are separate. You're disconnect. Disconnect is the act. You're doing it. Disconnect. Disconnection is the state. See the difference? Disconnection is the state, the condition where you are in. But the act is you disconnect. You willfully separate yourself. Follow? That, that's a very clear distinction, meaning to say there is such thing as an act of will involved. Whether or not it's forced by some external pressure, but there's always an act of you that causes you to disconnect or separate. Is that clear? And you know, nowadays, I think everybody is already in that understanding of our culture, of a modern 21st century, that we are really very busy, highly, supposedly, socially connected. Yes? Social media and all. But actually left us very disconnected and not related. Another definition of disconnect is not able to relate not able or unable to relate follow yeah. that's two different things so and in the current age there's actually a phobia that has developed because of this sense of disconnection this abnormal or persistent fear of being alone it's generating a brand new fear and they call that Autophobia, fear of being alone. Auto, alone, phobia is fear. Think about it, it's actually you are afraid of being with yourself. Think it through again. Auto is alone, phobia is fear. So fear of being alone. But if you really try to dissect it, auto is alone, that's you, without people, you're afraid of being with yourself. That's why you sleep with your television on sometimes. Because you just couldn't handle what's going on in your head, right? Even in a uh, helicopter, what? we haven't talked about helicopter. <laughs> Even in the elevator, pagpasok mo sa elevator, instead of smiling and connecting to people, get a cell phone, whatever, you just don't want, you're not present, isn't it? And it's prevalent. There's so many ways that you can disconnect. So this is, this is actually now a brand new fear, autophobia, fear of being alone. And you, there's so many ways you can hide that. Even if you keep coming here, I am sure if I have a privilege to sit down with you, you're actually afraid being with your seatmate. <laughs> Not afraid like I don't want to be there, but you don't want to be known what's really in your heart and mind. Yes, you're thinking that for yourself and your other friend is thinking that for yourself. What do you think is the effect? Two friendly people trying to be friendly but totally disconnected. And that always happens, be it in friendship, in family, everywhere, right? Digital communication has lost the opportunity for us to be known and know another. Technology, I love technology, even if I'm not really into technology. <laughs> technology offers the comfort, but leaves us with a lower threshold of intimacy. And this is just a way of coping this fear of being alone. In your family, in your relationship, in your business, everywhere around us involves relationship. At one point or another, or to some degree or another, there is a certain fear of being alone or be made known. Whether it's you feel that you are not loved, you are not heard, you are not understood, you are not gotten. There's this sense of like, nobody really knows me. The, I call it insanity because the more you know that nobody knows you, you feel so bad and you want to disconnect because you want to preserve yourself, but you end up more lonely. Yes? 
and you try to navigate that world of trying to fill it in such that you won't feel lonely, but you always end up being lonely. Obviously, we've spent lives for three years. I have this desire to gain knowledge, to study and study and learn and teach whatsoever. And the more I know about it, the more I realize and go through the process of the totem pole of growth in knowledge, I end up more lonelier than ever and more disconnected from the very people I care and love. And I will go through that one by one later on, the effects of disconnection. So that's one fear. Another phobia that's coming on, coming about is the fear of being phoneless. Who has that? Aha. Uh -huh. At walang age yan, ha? Wala sa age yan, ha? Mawala lang yung gadget mo na ano na, ano nangyari na, ah, naku, I have no phone. What happened? I can't function. It's so hard. Nomophobia. Nomophobia, if you look at it, is actually a symptom to cover up what? Autophobia. Yeah? Because you just couldn't be with yourself. Yeah, I can hear an amen here. You know, the topic of disconnection is not easy. Because sometimes something external traumatic can happen to us that causes us, whether we like it or not, to disconnect or be disconnected. Even people in the jail, they don't want to be in jail, but they're put in jail. Children that are being locked in the room, they don't want that, but they end up being there. Or people who I would say has lost it at some point end up being in a room in white space that they don't want to be there and they have to face whatever they have to face themselves. So this is a broad spectrum of disconnection. These are just things that I'm going to talk to you about. But behind that is this fear of what will happen to me? I'm alone. No one will save me. No one will get me. No one will deliver me from this. No one really understood what I'm feeling and thinking. And it doesn't help. We live in a very distracted century. If the greatest need is love, so a betrayal from loved one is the most devastating also, right? That's what's going to bring me the effects of disconnection, the dangers of isolation. The lack of relationship is actually going to be crippling in your thoughts and in your spirit, right? Modern psychology calls it a potent killer. But in the Bible, it is also said that your entire being will go brittle and wane your energy and drain you if you are isolated. And they say that isolation is the root cause of all paranoia, depression, schizophrenia, all forms of mania. It rhymes. There's deep sense of loneliness around us. Whether or not you would say, Earl, you know, I'm a mature Christian. I've been, I don't do that. I got that praise God for you. But there are moments that we go through that. I go through that sometimes. Not as often now. But I do realize, like, yeah, I'm actually, you know, I seem like very public, but I'm actually an introvert. Before coming here, they don't understand that I just go to the mountains by myself. There's this need for me to be alone. But of course, in this season of my life, it's different. I just want to be alone with God. Another effect of this uh, connection is self-absorption. Isn't it if something happened to you, traumatic, imagine or not, okay? In short, you were hurt. You distance yourself. You think about what's going on with you. So the focus is now with you and in your thoughts and in your words. The more you become so isolated and disconnected and so separated from your loved one. Even marriages that could happen. I'm not talking about divorces. Divorces are very clear. Of course, when there is a moment of divorce, it's a traumatic type of disconnection. It begins physically, then mentally, emotionally, then spiritually. There is a sudden separation. Like any tree, remember? I love flowers. My children like to pick flowers. But when you get the flower from a tree, it can only survive for minutes or days. 
Even if you put fertilizer, eventually it will die. Like all of us, if we are separated, we are to die. And what is the effect of that? I call this a created perverted reality. What do I mean by that? Because we can't be with ourselves, we try to cover it up. We have form of escapism, television, sex, drugs, everything to name a few. But this brought about it seems like it's just friendly, but eventually it hides something deeper, cosplay. You have to create this new reality about yourself. You create a fantasy about who you are because you don't like what you have. You have this idea of maybe I should, I should be doing this. And that's why people create fake FB accounts. Or it's so easy to find close friends over the internet because there's really no one-on-one -on -one relationship. You can hide from our fears, we can hide from our pain and pretend and make this facade we are all okay. And we have a different identity. Sometimes that is strong, you find yourself strong, sometimes you're not there, you're in the mountain, but oftentimes you go left and right and sometimes find yourself in between. Yes? That is the effect of disconnection. The more you look at yourself, that's why we can be with superficiality. Sometimes it's so easy to be superficial, right? Because we can all have all that. And I love beauty. I want, I, I like, my name is Beauty, but Earl Beauty. But what I'm saying is we can be okay with that. Because if we can be okay with that, it doesn't demand our, of ourselves to give to another, right? Or demand another of themselves to us. And we have crafted that. We have mastered superficiality. So what's behind all this? Why do we have this deep sense of loneliness? Even if you have a lot of best friends, 10 million followers. In fact, people who are, I call them the uh, celebrated prisoner. I'm privileged to meet a lot of um, international or local celebrities. And the more I talk to them, the more I see how lonely they are. And it doesn't have to be celebrity. It could be with anybody. The more power, that's why now we understood when they say it's lonely on the top. Right? Because you think nobody understands you. I have this friend and I asked her permission. She said, why can't you just allow anybody to just man to ent entertain man courting you? Because Earl, if this man is not as rich as me, I can't help myself to think that he is after my money. And it's real for her. It's really crippling her. But actually, that's the cause why she ends up so lonely. Because you're always thinking somebody will take advantage of you, so you preserve yourself, you protect yourself. Oh, itong babae nito masyadong fresh. Ano kayang gusto niyo sa akin? Yes? Yes? Yeah, I hope I'm not as fresh to you. <laughs> but what is it? Why do we have that? Because of this innate sense of guilt and shame. We are born into it. Remember? The story of the first fall, it's part of our natural sense that we have this guilt, we have this shame that we carry, and we have something we want to get, but we don't have it. And of course, if you're in Christ, you got it, but most people, that's the source, this innate guilt, like we're always guilty about something, or ashamed about something, and you don't want it to be known. That's behind all that. That's what's going on. Because your mind is focused on yourself. That's why we avoid ourselves. Because self-avoidance is the barrier of endless destruction developed over the years as a reaction to the burden of being alone. I like one theologian, he put that. I really like the way he's descri describing it. Why is that? Now I want to show you. It's not just us who went through uh, disconnection. All through scripture it's written. Right? And what are the causes of disconnection? You got that? The effects of disconnection, you got that? Now, lo lo let's look at the heroes in the Bible who went through it. We have Noah, Hagar, Abraham, Moses, Joseph, David, Paul, and John. I checked the last three because I want to go through it. It, looking into their lives, how they got out of it, and how they responded, and how they be, was able to overcome that. Noah. Noah was preaching to a wicked generation for 120 years. Walang harvest. Imagine mo yun. Hagar. Remember? 
when Sarah despised her, she was asked to abandon and leave and be in the desert. Abraham, apart from the traveling, imagine going to that mount, carrying your son, knowing that you will sacrifice your son. How lonely is that long walk to the mountain? Moses, 40 years in the desert, waiting for God to deliver him or to re restore him or to bring to light what all was his life is all about. I don't know where you are in your walk. Has it been 40 years or 50 years and you feel like you are still not where you ought to be or where you want to be? And that could be a lonely position too, right? Right? David. David was betrayed not just by the people that he trusts in his kingdom, but by his very own son who wants to kill him. Paul, in the last age of his life, was in Mamertime prison. Mamertime is actually underground, alone, old. Right? John, in the later years of his life, spent most of his life, probably even died there in the island of Patmos but was able to create and write letters. But these people went through it. They went through this utter loneliness and disconnection. So don't worry. It's okay to face our issues because our heroes went through it too. We cannot escape disconnection. Now, why do we disconnect? Why do we disconnect? Why do we want to do it? First reason is infidelity. When Paul wrote 2 Timothy 1 and 2, he wrote it to people, not just the church, but to the people he, who, la who he labors with. Yung mga kasama niya sa ministry, very personal. And he said it in 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas, because he loved this world, he deserted me. Isn't it so painful when the people we trust leaves us? Yes? Be it a husband be it a sister, a brother, or a partner in the business, or people, your friend that you trust. This is the most reason why we disconnect. A broken trust. The pain of infidelity can really cause us to isolate. And look in your heart right now as we speak. Are there memories or recesses of the pain of being a uh, trust being broken in your life? And I think all of us share that, right? There's a little of it. Whether healed, renewed, restored, sometimes it keeps coming back and it pains us. And sometimes you just don't want to be there anymore. That's the number one reason why people disconnect, because of infidelity. In short, broken trust. The reason why we also disconnect, because of interference. Interference is something happened that abruptly stopped what you're doing. Like what happened yesterday, right? You were doing your own regular mundane, or some people, for sometimes mothers call it the drudgery of the mundane, when you're just going through the motion of being a mom and a housewife and doing your own thing, and then there comes a... What? An earthquake. And that's real, overwhelming life-threatening fear, right? Actually, sometimes you need to be shaken to bring to perspective what is really most important in life. Interference. It happens to Paul again. Alexander the coppersmith did great harm to me. The Lord will repay him according to his works. Watch out. He also gave a command to, to warn them. He is opposed to our words. Whatever that you're standing for, sometimes people oppose what you want to do. Even in your own home. You have direction for your own home. Your husband can oppose it, or your brothers and sisters can oppose it, your own mother can oppose it, and that makes you feel disconnected, right? Na parang, ako lang nito, ako na lang talaga. Do you hear yourself that? And everybody leaves you. Actually, that's my issue before. I have a fear of being abandoned. So, ang gagawin ko, ako na lang mangiiwan. <laughs> Hindi nga, that's to, that, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's how I survive it. Because of that fear is so strong to be left behind, I'd rather leave people behind before they can even come close. 
And that's the most loneliest saga of my life. It was crazy because I couldn't figure out why I'm like this. I want to be friends, but I'm not really connecting really to people. Right? Now, even Paul, David, his entire kingdom was half. Others went to Absalom, others went to him. Is it interference? And they have to fly and leave the kingdom. Sometimes, bahay mo pa, ikaw pa aalis. Right? Yes? Ay, daming yes. Diba? It's your own home. You created it. You spent money for it. You built it. And some major traumatic interference, you were forced to or choose to abandon and leave the place. That's one reason. Of course, you will disconnect. But I want to spend more time in this kind of disconnection, the third type. Because the reason why we're here, we're not in jail, correct? Or we're not locking ourselves in the room, even if our friends are and some of our dear families are. But there is some kind of dif disconnection that I would want to really focus on. And what is this? Willful disconnection. Willful disconnection because even if we really know already that if you isolate yourself, it will harm you, it will destroy you, it will destroy friendship, it will destroy a relationship, but you choose to do it. Yes? And please, let's be honest. We have that from time to time. A month ago, I couldn't kick off why I want to just don't want to talk to my husband. He's there. No, it, it's something like, because we're celebrating 10 years, and I said, what is this? Like, I'm sure I'm clear, okay, it's not his fault. I'm God, I'm clear of this. But I found myself, my heart, my mind, and my soul is not connecting to him. Even if he's talking to me every day, and he went to the States, he doesn't help because he's not physically here, so I can go through the motion and hide in FaceTime, right? But I know in my heart something is wrong. And I have to wrestle with God to explain posed to me, why don't I have this oneness in mind, body, and soul, and spirit with my husband? I said, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> and I will show you as I speak and unpack this, why do we willfully disconnect? And the Bible talked it so plainly. One who I, can you please read it with me? Is it an ouch? Ouch? One who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. I'm not talking about those people who are physically forced to be isolated. Follow? I'm talking about willful, sound, able human being who just willfully choose to separate yourself to just follow your desire. Desires are craving. And it's always naturally to be selfish. And it says this rebels against all, sa all sound judgment. And the fool is always focusing on host listening to his opinion. Isn't it when I say self-absorption, pag nagalit ka na sa isang kaibigan mo, ang naririnig mo na lang, wala nang counsel, sarili mo na lang, di ba? Kasalanan niya talaga eh. Sabi ko na, I can't trust eh. These people, this one, how will I ever trust? No more na. I will just do this. I'll preserve myself. I, am own my, I own my own misery. Nobody really understands me. All these things are happening, isn't it? And it's a slippery slope. You don't even know you're in it. I found myself there for almost over a week and I can't kick it. I said, what is this? What is the source of my utter disconnection? And we women, if, especially if we're surrounded with a lot of friends, we're okay to disconnect from our husband. Yeah? Yes? And you can go through the motion of doing being wife and mother, but you're actually not there, heart, mind, and spirit. And you're happy with your friends, let's just do this, let's just do that. But actually, it's brewing and growing. And even a child, it can happen to anybody. Disconnect from your mom. I always ask my daughter, can you tell me everything? He came from, yeah, but 
So I'm not buying the but. Let's understand why you cannot say everything to me. Until he brought me, okay, yeah, I can tell you everything. But I have to understand why. Proverbs 18, 1 and 2 is very clear. This is actually a warning to individual, radical individuality. Doing your own thing. We want to do our own thing, right? And isn't this the source of all the broken marriages? The source of why the church is having schism. The church is divided. You want to do your own thing. You got offended. You don't like it. We'll just go somewhere else. You don't like this group. You are challenged. You're disappointed. You go to another group. This very uncomfortable topic. I'm not saying everybody is released from this. We find ourselves in, in these moments from time to time. We just have to fight it. Like what's really driving it? You know, the absence of wisdom from counsel of people. You're, only the, you're the only counselor to yourself. That's what makes you a fool. And most people who are considered fool biblically are not those people who are not smart. They're actually the smartest people. But they just listen to their own counsel. So this is the warning to the wise and the headstrong. I'm speaking to myself. Because often than not, we make self-centered decisions that has us be separated from our loved ones. And we wonder why we are lonely. And if only we could go back and bring back time. We lost friendship sometimes because of that, right? We are isolated or disconnected from our family because of that. And don't worry, I will bring it to land. There is hope to everything. But it's very clear. Nobody created it. It's there. The one who isolates himself, the one who separates, pursues his what? I'll give you one second. Do you see yourself doing that sometimes? And I know we're all rebuked. James, James, <laughs> James 1, 14 also says it. But each person is tempted when he's drawn away and enticed by his own selfish desires. Then after us desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. How is uh, sin described? It's, it's death, the separation from God, right? And I'll go through that. So again, I'll bring you to the root cause of disconnection and why we disconnect. According to all of Scripture, from Old Testament to New Testament, it is sin. Because it is autonomy. We want to be law unto our own. There's because of trust, mistrust. That's just natural of our human nature. Can you follow? Where I'm not saying about, I am not diminishing the things that has been done to you. Because there are horrible, traumatic things that are done to us sometimes. You know, I have friends, and I've been serving to the women ministry. I've, I've met a lot of women, daughters or mothers or lolas. They wonder why their daughter or their mother or somebody in their family are just so far from them. And when you unpack it, actually there are things about their family member that they're not even aware about. That this kid has been abused persistently or one time that leaves a trauma to a person who can he or she open up because that is automatic guilt driven and shame riddled and you wonder why is she, why is she weird is it like that and whether we are so tired sometimes we just don't take time and say I want to know, I want to understand, why are you acting different? Why are you separated from me? You can feel that, right? Yes. A person can pretend they're close, but actually, no. Especially to your own husband, my husband. Single women, I pray that this will take off in your memory. But even sometimes in our intimacy as husband and wife, it plays a major role. Sometimes we physically say, I don't want intimacy because you're disconnected mentally and emotionally. Right? Either sometimes you withhold it because you want something. Right? You're using it something like, a, okay, I'm going to use this. But these are reality that we cannot escape because sin is in us. Whether you like it or not, whether this is the first time you heard it 
all the questions that you cannot put together why your life is your life is. And there is no peace, and there is no joy, and there is confusion because of sin. And my heart's desire is it will be exposed to you so you will be free from it. Then what do we do when we are disconnected? What we need when we are disconnected? Let's look at first. This is external. This is how we handle people we know who are disconnected, right? Before we look at ourselves, right? What do we do? Number one, how do we help people? Why do we need to connect? Because we need companionship. The, listen to this. Hear me out. The deep longing to connect is because we were created for union. The deep longing to connect is we are created for union and intimacy with our Creator. Eve was created into a relationship right away, isn't it? That's why there is a need, whether or not you want your husband or a, whatever you want, but there's something in you that you just want to be with someone, yes? But because of the hurt, the pain, the lies, and everything, you don't want to be with someone else and you end up alone. That's why I called it insanity. The greatest need is companionship. That's what we need to provide for people. And how do we provide that? 2 Timothy 4.11, when Paul wrote to Timothy, imagine Paul, the most strong and mature Christian in history, pleaded to have somebody to be with him. Right? Come, hurry. Bring my cloak. In the last few days of your life, that's why a lot of people in their deathbed always say, how I wish I spent time with my family or friends. John Stott said that friendship is a gift from God. How human friendship is a loving provision of God for mankind. We, can, we don't need a lot of friends. We just need one or two. And you can be a friend too. And how do you show that? Have compassion. Sometimes our friends are hard-headed, right? Iba kasi yung hindi talaga nila alam na nalululong sila sa depression, right? It's easy to be compassionate to those people. But we have hard time being compassionate to people who we think and who we know knows why they're there. Follow? Is that clear for me? That's why parang wala kang, wala kang tiyaga. Kasi ano ba ang tagal-tagal mo na? Kasalanan mo naman eh. And I find myself like that. And I have to like, oh Lord, please help me. You know? Because I do find myself not compassionate. I told you before, I have problems with getting sick. Like, okay, nagkasikit ka na Judah? Oh, three days tama na. Get up na. <laughs> that was crazy, but it's true. I have, the, I, I have to deal with that. We lack compassion. We need to give compassion because you were like that too. Imagine how you feel right now, whether articulated or not, is exactly what your friend is feeling. Alone and lonely, not heard or understood, waiting to be saved, waiting to be rescued, to be taken out from the darkness back to the light. But it takes an act of will. Have compassion to people. Take them out for coffee. Try to listen. What? What? Are, what, what why? How are you? You know, that's why it's beautiful to have it here. You know, you know don't think that discipleship group is a, a tool for churches to count members. It's really designed for companionship, to come together. I have a group of women that, you know, we share lives, darkness and light, pain and suffering, naghahalo na ang iyak at saka, anong tawag nun? Sipon. Sometimes. Right? Even our fear, we can be with that. We can share our fear because we know who we are in Christ. We need compassion. Do you have compassion to yourself? That's the hardest. Another thing, we need courage. We need courage. Courage is the ability to face Something so fearsome and threatening because you trust. The word here is trust. That somebody greater than you, your creator, your Lord, your Savior will fight the battle for you. That was the charge of God to Joshua. And that is Joshua's charge to his fellow Israelites. 
be of good courage. We need courage to face up what we are so afraid to face up. Why can't we be with ourselves? Why can't we even listen? What's really going into my head? What's re allow yourself. I know it's not easy. That's why isolation, that's why I said sometimes it's a, it's a double-edged. A part of isolation and disconnection is good. To really listen and be quiet before the Lord. Not an isolation to cope. It's different. But an isolation and disconnection to connect is necessary. We need courage. Face your fears. That's what you call it. Have courage to talk to that someone even if you don't like her. Even if she has hurt you. Choose the way of love and how I'll show you how those apostles showed up. Have the care, the consideration, the tender-heartedness, the sensitivity that your understanding of the matter is not the same as their understanding. It's not that you're better. That's just where they are in their walk. That's where they are in their life. And our job as believers, if you truly choose yourself and identify yourself as believer, is to demonstrate the love of God and have the courage to really, what are you going through? Can I walk you through this? And let them have their time. Paminsan, minsan, sundutin mo rin. Kasi minsan, they don't even know that they're enjoying. You know that's what you call self-indulgence? We just want to indulge in our misery sometimes. What happened? That's what happens. So have courage. We will be in darkness. Choose the way of love, courage, and compassion to be the fellowship of people. And you know what? I have a lot of friends who are actually not believing my faith right now. And it, there was a time when we feel like we are separated from each other, but they know who to call when things are not clear with them. And I still really pursue and bring myself to them and to really find out why and wait upon the Lord to make them understand why they choose to rebel, reject, or sometimes they don't really just know that you need to present the gospel. I'm sure some of you here come here because I invited you in some in Starbucks and I hope I can see you later. I really invite these people. Because there's always questions that need to be answered and longings that need to be met. Romans 15 one says, Now we are strong, have an obligation to bear witness to those people who are weak and without strength, and not to please ourselves, but to follow the way of our Lord. Yeah? Clear? We need all those things? Now, I want to focus on here. How do we overcome the fear of being alone? We're clear what it is, right? We clear the insanity of it. We clear, we are, we, we are clear and understand the effects of it and where it could lead us. It's always to a bottomless pit if we choose. Some of us doesn't know. That's why for those who know, please call, go to your friend. But now, how do we overcome the fear of being alone? And I want to go back. Remember, I made a ch check to Paul and John and David. It's found, and I want you to have your Bible on Psalm 62. Let's look at the responses of David, Paul, and John. Come back here for a second. Hang on. Everything we do is always a matter of reaction or response. Can you follow? Everything we do is always a matter of reaction or response. You leave the church because you, I don't know for what reason, is it a reaction or a response? You didn't talk to your husband, is it a reaction or a response? To your mom, to your brother, to your sister, are you just simply reacting or are you responding the way you ought to respond? And I'm not using anything here other than what biblical heroes David, Paul, and John exhibited. Okay? Clear? Are you excited now? Yes. You still with me? Yes. What does it say? Read with me, please. Okay. 
There is no fear in love. Say it with me. This is, not, this is not just any panacea, but this is the ultimate and the only cure for fear. Yes, we need faith. Faith, as Hebrews 11 defined, because this, this translation, it says, um, the things we hope for are things not seen, right? But I like HSB. It says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, and the proof of what is not seen. Faith will carry you. But what will stop the fear? Love. Some call it the opposite of fear is love. That is the solution and the cure for fear. But perfect love casts out all fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Simple context. John wrote this to the universal church, to both believers and unbelievers. He was talking about here the judgment day, right? That's what this text is really saying, to the judgment day when Jesus will come back again to judge the living and the dead. That as believers, we should not have fear, but we can draw great wealth in this. Love, steadfast love of God. And it is perfected. When you say, cast out fear, it produces confidence in us. For genuine believers, there is no need to fear for judgment, for no punishment, because God sent His Son. When John speaks of love, this is brought to be progressive, is the full God-like character. That's why perfect love casts out all fear. Fear involves punishment. The one that's not perfective in love, you are growing in it. It is an attribute of God, the character of God implant in, implanted in you if you choose to believe in God. To all my sisters who has not really studied and considered the full love of God, this is the only answer to all your human malady and problem. But for my sisters who choose to say that we are Christians, this is the only answer. Are you really enjoying the fullness of the love of God? Are you demonstrating it to another? The reason why Judah and I fought, because over the years, 10 years, there are things that I felt in my thought is right. That I said, I don't want to be nice anymore. Did you believe that? I don't want to be nice anymore. Parang, ano nangyari sa'yo? Are you the daughter of the devil now? <laughs> Disconnected, exactly, right? Because of one hurt. I said, help me, honey. I can't kick it off. I just, because, because, you know, sometimes when you love, you're always hurt. But God always tells you to respond in love, in gentleness. In fact, He to tells you to persevere for their salvation. Not only I will love those people who hurt me, I have to labor for their salvation. And the reason I can do that, that I can love the unlovable, because He first loved us. It's something that we get that we give away. It's something, it's nothing we could never, ever generate. We could never act it out. That's John. Perfect love casts out all fear. That's the answer. That's the solution. So remind yourself of God's love. And we know He loves perfectly. Romans 8, 5, 35 to 39 talks about it. No devil, no hell, no sickness can separate us from the love of God, right? Nothing can separate us. Nothing meaning to say, even if how traumatic, God is a just God. How devastating, God is a God of restoration. How dark, God is a God of light. So it's really nothing can separate us from the love. That is the focus. Our mind, our heart, when you look at through the Bible, mind, heart is the same definition. It is the seat of your will. That is your holy affection that will drive your will to act in faith. Everything is in the heart and that's connected. Mind and heart is actually the same, all of Scripture. 
your focus is the immeasurable love of God. When I can't kick off, when I was upset with Judah because of his mom, his dad, his family, whatever, it's so easy to blame, right? Even if sometimes we are right, but that's not what God says. I still have to love. And I saw myself getting dark, and this really helped me. Lord, let your love overtake me, because right now I am in fear. I cannot kick myself out. And how did David show this to us? Before we go there, I want to read to you um, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall be I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. How did David deal with this when Absalom, his son, abandoned him, betrayed him, took his people, took his kingdom, dealt with it? Psalm 62. Please read your Bible because I, I did not write everything there. I am at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. Can you read this with me? Before I go where it really means, suffering should not drive us away from God, but helps us to identify with Him and allow His love to heal us. I want you to imagine and remember and come to mind. David was, had, had an infidelity, right? He himself went through it. Remember what she did with Bathsheba and Uriah? So, hindi lang siya recipient, ginawa din niya. And now, he's a recipient of it from his son Absalom and his leaders. Another context. Interference of his kingdom. When Absalom came back, you read it in 2 Samuel chapter 15 to 18, when Absalom killed his other son Ammon because the Ammon, Am, Ammon, Ammon raised Tamar, I mean raped Tamar, he killed. Absalom killed Ammon, right? So na, uh, umalis si, si Absalom. And David grieved and his advisor said, bring him back to the kingdom. He brought him back to the kingdom but he didn't speak to him for two years. Can you see that? And after that, the rebellion happened. But how did he do this? And I want to show you how people in the Bible fight and struggle with this. Psalm is so powerful in fighting darkness. Because it shapes your mind and your heart, your holy affection. I am at rest in God alone. When you say rest here, is Dumia expresses the idea of silence. I am waiting. Other translations, I am waiting. I am at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. So here, from 1 to 2 and 3, actually David asserted confidently his trust to God. He alone is my rock, my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will never be shaken even if there's a point six. Did you pray that? Lord, help me. Don't let this building fall. Right? Do you have that in your heart? Because salvation comes from trusting God. Rest, Dumia, your idea of silence. Okay, I cannot control, I cannot change what's happening. I cannot control what my son Absalom is doing. It's painful for me, Lord, but I trust you. What does trust say? Rely with one's own weight. Give his own because you are the meaning of that because somebody is stronger than you and everything that happens to you that's holding you. Believing, trust, secure confidence. What is secure? Worthy of confidence. You're putting your weight in it. Rest with one's all weight. You're resting everything. You're not just trusting in your thoughts but your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit, even what is to come because you trust that God is sovereign. So David was, as, as they're moving from their kingdom, bringing half of the kingdom, he was singing this psalm, I am a trust in God alone. And he continued on. In your Bible, can you read it? 
Rest in God alone, my soul, for my soul, for my hope comes from you. He alone. This one, the alone is not himself, right? The alone is directed to God. The focus shifted. So what did he do? Very practical. Actually, Psalm 32 and 62 is very practical counsel. Number one, David asserted his confidence to God. He gave his weight. That's trust. Trust in God alone. I am a trust in God alone. He alone is my rock. He alone is my salvation. He continued on. In verse 8, he says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. What did David do here? What did David do here? He prayed to God. Not only strength, but compassionate, ever attentive God will hear your cry. If your friends failed you in listening to you, God will never. He will always, so opening your hearts, one's request through prayer. So number one, he asserted, that's praise. Number two, he prayed, right? That's what he did. Can you read on the other part? And if you continue on in 5 to 8, the second section, David reiterated that the true salvation is available from God at all times. Refuge is It's actually an image of a bird going to a shelter of her mother. That's why, remember, we are a strong tower. We hide in the shelter of our shadow of the Almighty. That's what refuge is. That's comfort, that we have a place to go. Employs the imagery of a fledging bird, you know, finding refuge in the arms and the shadow and the security of the wings of her mom or his mom. What is verse 3 and 6 saying here? That David is affirming the feelings to God, then he reaffirmed his faith. Sometimes our feelings are so strong and we are overtaken by it. That's why we need to go to the Word of God, to talk to God, to praise Him, to wrestle with Him, so our emotions will shift and our faith is refreshed. Follow? Three verse, but that's exactly what he did. Verse 5 and 8, his refuge, he reiterated it. Then he went to 9 to 12. What is 9 to 12? Can somebody read it for me? He exhorted his people, right? Whom he addressed to look beyond the prosperity of the wicked. He was saying like, what are you doing? Don't worry about what they did. Remember, this is his son. This is his advisors. Can you read it? Are you reading it? 9 to 12, please. I'll just go first. Uh, sorry. I'll just go to Psalm. Psalm 62. He said it here. Continue. 8 to, take 8 to 11. Trust in him alone at all times, you people. Pour your heart before him. Men are only vapor, exalted men, an illusion. Sometimes we trust on people that are overwhelmed with people who we think are very powerful. Look what the Bible says. Exalted men, an illusion. Weight in the scales, they go up. Together, they are less than vapor. Place your trust. Place no trust in oppression. Don't worry about what they're doing because they're being oppressed right now. Or false hope in robbery. Because his, remember, his kingdom was taken away. If wealth increases, pay no attention to it. God has spoken to me once. I have heard him twice. Strength belongs to God. And faithful love belongs to our Lord. Again, David prays, David prayed, and David prays again and reaffirmed the steadfastness of God's love. Can you follow that? That's just what he did. And this psalm was written while he was fle fleeing from Absalom's army. And you know the story. And you know, this, this is the one that I really cried. Because when David, I'm talking about love again. When David was fighting now the, 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 the armies of Absalom, he told this general, please be gentle on my son. And the army refused. The general still killed Absalom. And David wept. Imagine the son of a father who has been betrayed the father of a son who's been betrayed by the son still long for the love of the father, of the son, I mean. Can you follow? This father who was betrayed by Absalom, no matter what Absalom did, he was willing to forgive and still cried for the son. My son, my son. He praised God. He reaffirmed 
his trust in God. It grew his faith. He prayed to God. He praised, to, he praised God once again. And now he trusted the love of God. That's what Psalm 62 is all about. It's broken in through three sections. Can you follow? True faith is not only bolstered by a strong God. It is emboldened by his love. Say it with me. Emboldened by his love. We need, you know, when we go through trials or darkness, we don't only need strength for our will, but fuel also for our emotion. And only the love of God can provide that. Sometimes our emotions brings us to ruin, right? It's the most powerful if directed to the right object. Not to yourself, but to God's love. You saw the attitude the behavior, the response of David. Trust in God alone. Is that clear? But the, how did he get there? Did you ask that question? How did he get there? How did he become so emboldened by the love of God? And I shall show you. And this is the access to your freedom. The joy of forgiveness. Psalm 32 is a, the paradigm of forgiveness. Remember, it says in Psalm 32, you have your Bible. I'm trying to make a new way now to just encourage everybody to bring your Bible. So I will not put it up there. Psalm 32, what does it say to, to begin with? Blessed is he or how joyful is he for those whose transgression is forgiven. Sorry. Sorry. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. Okay, wait here. Three things are happening here. David is describing three kinds of sin. Transgression is forgiven, right? What is it talking about? He's talking about rebellion against God. Transgression is basic rebellion against God. <clears throat> How blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. What is it, iniquity here? There's sin, there's transgression, and there's sin in other translation. Sin here is missing the mark of God's standard. Hata. It's more generally referring to deliberate or offensive sin. Remember Proverbs 18, 1 and 2 and James? This is what he's talking about. So there's rebellion against God and there's what? Missing the mark of God's standard. And the third is iniquity. Merimea, a behavior that is bent or twisted. Listen to this. It progressed. There's a rebellion against God. And that's why I love the Bible. I encourage you to read it and study it. Can't you see? I have five of this. Different translations. First, transgression, there's a general rebellion. All of us is rebelling against God because we're under God's wrath, right? Then he progress, sin. We miss the mark. There's a standard. We choose to do that, not to do that. Third, iniquity. This is deliberate. This is deceit. A behavior that is bent or twisted because you're emphasizing on falsehood and hypocrisy. And there's a wound. Sin, idea of going astray. So nag pro progress, di ba? First, you're rebelling against God. Now you're missing the mark. Now you're going astray. Number one, next is you're deceitful already because you're following your way. And you're now is twisted. Follow? That's what David is. How blessed is the man. The, uh, who, how blessed is he? He's again affirming how happy, how macarious you are if you're under God that your sin is forgiven. Now verse 3, look what happened. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted. He told you what he did, what happens to him when he doesn't confess his sin. The silence that he's talking about here is very specific. Silence is not confessing. When I kept silent, not confessing my sin, your strength is drained. How many of us we know that when we are silent about something or holding our anger towards another, we become tired. Yeah? And we seem can't. Parang walang life. Diba? Parang bakit ka, ano? It's heavy in us. David talks about that. 
through groaning all day long because even if you don't share it, it's internal. Your spirit is groaning for it. Bones brittle, strength drained represents physical manifestation of a person that is suffering. And he can feel the hand of God. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained with the fever of heat of summer. How obvious, we are in summer. How perfect, right? Naglakad ka lang dyan sa green belt, ang init-init, di ba? Parang mamamatay sa pagod. That's what happened. He is actually describing what happened to him if he refused to confess in sin. Now, go to verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you. He asked for forgiveness. My iniquity I did not hide. And I will confess my transgression, my rebellion against you, Lord. This is a penitent or a lament psalm because of what happened to Uriah and Bathsheba. And I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave the guilt of my sin. Verse 5, in contrast to the sufferings of 3-4, confession of sin brings relief because God took away the guilt of sin. So the access for us to be able to trust God and receive His love is forgiveness. This is the only way, and even to the people that you are disconnected with, all it takes is actually to forgive another, right? I shared one with Tita, um, um, Tita Gina that some people are so well-meaning sometimes, but because they're so well-meaning and they're just listening to their own counsel, they forgot that the only way is just to forgive and everything will be all right. I'm not saying be best friends right away, but you don't carry, okay? And you don't cause division. You plead for protection for your family, for your church to be divided. It's because of this. Unforgiveness. David told you. He affirmed. Affirmation is number one. Lord, how blessed. And then he confessed. Lord, look, I don't confess to you. This is what happens to me. I'm like a worm. And now he confessed. I'm alive. The guilt was taken away from, me, from him. Therefore, guilt, by the way, just a focus. Guilt is not a subjective feeling, but a liability for punishment. It's not a subjective feeling, meaning to say it's not just because guilty, ikaw lang yon, lahat tayo guilty, follow? And we can only be relieved from the blood of Jesus Christ if we believe in him alone. And that guilt will be taken. It's not because we can do it. We can't earn it. Mere removal of feeling over sin is clearly not intended since God brings conviction. So what is needed for us to be delivered from overcoming the fear of being alone is forgiveness that will yield to trust. It's all forgiveness, my friends. Please look into your heart. Have the courage to forgive yourself to begin with. Let me pause for a moment. How many of you here still harbor forgiveness in your heart? Towards yourself, towards another, to your mother. And it's not easy, but you wrestle with it. You know, when I go through something, I wrestle with it with God, please, until my emotions change, until my feelings change, until a perspective is given to me. Sometimes, di ba, nakahiga ka na mong gumalaw? Yes? Because you were actually deep in your thoughts, thinking all these things. 7 and 8. He now continued on. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with, a, with my eye upon you. This is God giving David. And do not be as a horse or a mule which have no understanding, whose trappings include brick and bridle that hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near you. When you say don't be a horse, do not restrain yourself from being Corrected. We need correction from time to time, yes? We are so headstrong sometimes and we think we are so right, but we need correction. We need wisdom from other people who speak the word of God. And you need to just really fight it through. I will teach you and instruct you. Now, wisdom is given to David. Moral clarity is given. Spiritual perspective is changing. Can you follow ang dinaanan niya? Hirap na hirap siya. Lord, how blessed you are, how blessed you are. 
Kaya nga minsan pag nagpe-praise ka in all your mind and truth and spirit, sometimes para kang siraulo sa iba, di ba? Iyak ka ng iyak. Sorry ka ng sorry. Happy ka na naman. Isn't it like that? Watch yourself as you worship. I was crying. I'm so sorry, Lord. And now I'm happy, Lord. I'm ready. But that's not where you go because you're... Actually, it's very pragmatic and simple. Choose to trust God. Be humble to ask for forgiveness of sins until your emotion change. You gain clarity and perspective. Now you know what to do. After a while, you can overlook an offense. After a while, you can really go to people who, has, who have hurt you. Right? Don't resist repentance and don't hold back confession. That's why James said we, have, we must confess to one another. If you have known each other and you don't know what's going on to somebody else's life, people, there's this connection in there. Right? Now, how lucky finished it. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but those who trust in the Lord, loving kindness, said, shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous one. That's what Tita Gina was saying. Righteous one, you are made righteous by his love. And shout for joy, oh, all you who are upright in heart. It's always the condition of our heart. Is your heart forgiving? Is your heart tender? Or is your heart still wrestling? Before I put it to a close to summarize in one, sen in one point, I would like to call a friend. I've known him for, what, two years? Actually, I was approached by her old uh, disciple, like, Earl, I'm going abroad. I have a team. Can you inherit them? Sabi ko, anong inherit? Ano yan? Lupa? Ako gusto ko yun. <laughs> so I said, I met with the women because I always uh, find it a privilege to be approached for discipleship. I said, you know what? You don't need me. If you've been together for years, it's time for you to grow and mature together. Let's raise leaders from your group. So one of them stepped up, and from time to time, I check on them. And when I met this woman, she said, she's so loving. And I really said, really? But I waited for the right time, and the wait was not in vain. And I want you to learn a story from her two-minute or three-minute. Please welcome April Ocampo. I was born into a family of matriarchs. Growing up, I was taught to be independent, mentally and emotionally strong, and I was groomed to make my own decisions, even at a very young age. My mom would always tell me that what any man can achieve, I was free to pursue and achieve not only as well, but better. This type of upbringing also entailed that showing or sharing of any hurt or pain, whether through words or through my face is a sign of weakness. Thus, I viewed crying in public or letting people know of my hardships to be an absolute no-no. I was brought up by what we know of as a Catolico Sagrado family, where although I knew God, I did not know him very well. I knew his name, but not his heart. He was as distant as my father was, kind, a good provider, and a must-be-respected being, but all in all, silent as he is not really part of my everyday encounters and stories to share. This type of mindset, I thought, gave me an edge during my high school and college years. Since I became a fierce competitor in school, and I was able to achieve some academically. So, very naive, right? Well, this kind of attitude did not come too handy in the real world. In my first year in the corporate world, I fell in love with a man who was already committed. And so I entered into an adulterous relationship in secret. Okay? This guy was then in an eight-year relationship already with another woman, but I justified having fallen head over, hell, head over heels in love and continued my sins the, entire, the entirety of my 20s. By the time God pulled me out of the relationship, 
He already got married, had three children, and living overseas. And me, I was living a double life. I had evolved into a 30s version of Miranda Priestley from The Devil Wears Prada. Cold-hearted, man-hater, strong, independent, career-driven, successful girl boss who, according to legend, was too choosy and has standards too high, she might probably end up an old spinster. By the time I was 30, all I had left was a broken heart and a poker face. I earned the respect of my peers, but not of God's. No, not his. I also have suffered mental health problems and was diagnosed with functional anxiety and OCD. I was so disconnected to God and the world that nobody even knew that I was suffering. So much so, every night I would cry whenever I thought no one was looking. So depression, the worst kind of depression, that's the kind that no one can see. But I am so fortunate that someone was looking and listening to my silent tears and unspoken prayers. Jesus really is a God of miracles and of the impossible. I thought that my heart and my soul was beyond repair. I embraced the pain as part of myself and used it as a tool and as an armor to drive myself more successful, stronger, and of course, crazier. Outside, it seemed like I had everything under control. And while internally, it felt like I have this, but while like internally, I felt like um, dying a thousand times. Time do not heal all wounds. Absence do not heal all wounds. Ladies, do not be fooled. I have tried them and nothing works. Eight years into the relationship, I met another guy from my new work. Well, I rarely got too close to guys since. I probably have developed trust issues by this time. But this new person really caught my attention. He intrigued me. He reminded me so much of the other guy that I am currently in a relationship with. So I thought to myself that maybe he was someone God sent me because he caught my attention and as a bonus, he was also single, curing a broken heart from an ex who reminded him of me. He was at that time in his life where he was seeking Jesus and getting to know God. Although I was generally a mistrusting person, when he invited me to go with him to CCF to listen to um, Nick Vujicic, to my own surprise, I said yes. Rumor has it that time and absence do not heal all wounds. So I thought that maybe being in another relationship could heal me in sanity. <laughs> well, humor has it, it doesn't. I once again, trapped in the cycle of my own sins, entered into another wrong relationship and ended up more hurt and more walled than ever. However, being with this new guy led me to catch the attention of another man. The man. Despite the ongoing imperfect situation I was in, I found myself being drawn to attend more Sunday services in CCF, joining a D-group, participating in the Glorious Hope program, and even participated in a spiritual deliverance. The closer I got to know Jesus, the more I got convicted to get out of the relationship. And in 2017, during prayer and fasting week, hallelujah, we called it quits. We both realized that our relationship was just a codependent relationship born from missing our excess. Devoid of any romantic relationship, I was able to focus on knowing God and realize that this is how it feels like to be properly loved. Nevertheless, one more hurdle remained, as Earl said. Although I already was able to detach myself from all the relationships and their emotional holds on me, I remained still so disconnected to people. I thought that having Jesus and focusing on myself is enough. It turns out that my heart still had a hard time letting people in, so I physically and emotionally detached myself for fear of trusting and getting hurt again. 
I did not like investing or sharing myself. I hated sharing myself with people because I was afraid of repeating the same mistakes, but it turned out I was just making new ones. I was still walled and guarded as I fought to keep to myself. I felt so disconnected to the point that I was unable to respond to the Lord's calling for me, to glorify Him through opening my heart to people and using my experience and testimony for people to know His might and glory. Well, very, very fortunately, God truly is a God who pursues better than any suitor, better than any suitor I have known in life or read in books or watched in movies. He constantly called me despite my ignorance and hard-headedness. And until one fateful day during um, a beautiful exchange, it's a woman's retreat, um, that my disciple asked me to join, I finally caved. Like the walls of Jericho, with uh, Earl probably being the, the trumpet, <laughs> my walls came crumbling down and my heart was exposed. I started to feel everything at the same time. Joy, pain, sorrow, compassion, glee, everything. And it felt wonderful. I saw all the women crying in the retreat and I knew that point on that there were a lot of them like me. And if we share each other's suffering and stories as God used each, each one of us to heal each other, then I don't mind exposing my heart and being vulnerable to the world. Yes, I may no longer be strong, but it doesn't matter because this time I know I am loved. Ezekiel 36.26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And he, indeed, he did. So here I am today, still as fierce as ever, single as ever, once a cold-hearted, proud woman, who died to sins but is now sporting my fresh new heart that the Lord Almighty gifted me. And for the first time, first time in my life, in my entire life, I am standing here bare naked sharing to all of you the story of Jesus in my life. A deed I once thought I'd never even imagine myself writing, a confession, a testimony, let alone speaking in front, speaking and confessing in public. Time Absence and new relationships do not heal wounds, dear ladies. Jesus heals. Okay. I am April Ocampo, a sinner, sharing for the first time that a truly strong woman is a woman of God with raw and tender heart that beats for Jesus and for our brothers and sisters. Thank you and that in all things, may God be glorified. Strong in him. Strong in him. Thank you, April. How beautiful. The love of God conquers all fears. And to put it a close, the text says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Let them not be afraid. Let your heart not be troubled. Let them not be afraid. The end result of a life hidden in the Holy Spirit is a life of peace. It's a life of peace. No other but a life of peace. Sin, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and numerous other forces is always at war with us. There are days that are stronger, there are days that are not. But always remember, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So any iota of fear has to be brought to His throne of grace. And the only way you can access that grace is through forgiveness. To put it to a close, I put this together. How do we overcome the fear of being alone? I'm speaking to two kinds of people here. Respond to the call to believe God's love. To those who are still in the fence 
or probably have known of or heard about God, but what it is, He's calling you back home. And the only way He's giving you His love, believe. And for those who believe, are you obeying the command to trust God's love at all times in Him alone? Being alone is good. Being disconnected from the world is good. As long as you're always, always connected to God. But the access of that is forgiveness. And the end result is always joy and peace. So my friends, my sisters, is your heart open to be replaced by His tender and caring and loving love? And the heart that is new. So I pray that in our time together, it has exposed something so that you'll be delivered from darkness and brought to light and enjoy joy and peace. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoy our time together. Can I pray for you guys? Yes. Abba Father, We praise your holy name. We praise your faithfulness. We praise you that no matter how unfaithful we are at times, you never quit. You never gave up on us. You never disconnected from us. And you always, always wash us with your love and bring us back home into thy presence. Forgive us, Lord, for rejecting you. Forgive us for rebelling in you. Forgive us for saying, yes, yes, Lord, but doing something else. Because in you, if we're truly in you, we cannot continue to live in sin. Lord, as you have exposed the iniquity, the sin, the deceit in our lives, let your love wash us the way you loved and wash David. Make us brand new, whiter than snow. Father, and let our heart beat only what's after yours. Let our whole being, mind, body, soul, and spirit focus on your love alone. That indeed, perfect love cast out all fear. Father, I lift to you my sisters and few brothers in the back. I pray, Lord, that in this moment, that they would really, you would really renew your love for them. Make it so real for them. Teach them to demonstrate your love to another, especially those people that they're having a hard time to love and forgive. I pray for revival for this church to serve you. I pray, Lord, that the women will go out there and share and proclaim, not only proclaim your love, but above all, demonstrate it to one another. Lord, keep us in the shadow of the Almighty. May we truly truly respond in love and gentleness praise you in truth and spirit and keep us keep us always hidden in the shadow of the almighty we ask all this in jesus name amen everything everything is indeed in christ alone so thank you so much please don't go home without forgiving yourself and someone in your life amen